Hello, I'm Bob Norton, founder and creator of Airtight Management. Welcome to our 101 Video Best Practices series. I know that these proven practices will help you become a better manager and leader. We also know that companies that use even a small fraction of them over time become market leaders and world-class companies in their space. These 101 best practices are just a small sample of over a thousand embedded in the airtight management six systems. Today, we're going to talk about ones used to create high performance teams. High performance technique number seven in the 101 best practices series. The high performance technique is called clearly defining roles and responsibilities. Now this is one of those things that's fairly easy to say, but often very hard to do. Essentially, each task and objective or piece of a project has to be defined well. It's not an all-encompassing, here's our mission and here's our job. It does not mean vague job descriptions because there'll be lots of gray areas and overlap and areas that can be debated as to whose responsibility it is. No, this means no ambiguity at all and breaking up a project into pieces and phases so that there is a who, what, where, when, and sometimes even a why and how that's discussed among the team for communications and synergy. Each team member must understand what they must do and also what they must not do. Each team member must also be able to look at the bigger picture or the plan and how those pieces in the shorter term fit into that bigger plan. So we'll talk about that later, but you remember one high practice, uh, high performance practice is having a clear mission and vision. Well, that means the end objective. It doesn't mean all the pieces and phases and parts that may have to be drilled down to. So with this best practice, clear roles being defined and responsibilities and accountability, I'm talking about drilling down to a greater level of detail. Uh, it might be uh, a day's worth of work, a week's worth of work, a month's worth of work, but it's got to be defined and it's got to have clear lines. Every deliverable or objective really needs to have that kind of clarity with no excuses for not having it. Now, the team leader is responsible for making sure that everyone understands what their deliverables are and when they're going to happen. Uh, because the team leader you know, has to sell and manage all of that process and coordinate people. The idea of a team without a team leader is sort of a myth. Self-managing and self-organizing teams happen, but they still need a leader, and we'll talk about that more later. Uh, I normally recommend using the management by objective process, which was created by Peter Drucker in the 1960s, and he's essentially the father of management. Now, there are other systems, there's SMART and GOSPA and other things, but they have an awful lot of overlap. But the psychology behind these is very important, and it, it, they've been proven to greatly enhance the value creation of teams. But you've got to remember that this goal-setting process process, whatever it is, needs to be applied in a way that isn't micromanaging, but is given reasonable chunks of work to people that are well-defined so they can go off and do their own thing. Um, any project, and my rule of thumb is any project that's more than about half a day or a day, that's worth a five-minute discussion around the who, what, when, and where of that deliverable and making sure we have a clear uh, definition of what that deliverable is. That one or two percent overhead on communications and synergizing the team is always worth it and it saves a lot of trouble in the end. I'm Bob Norton for Airtight Management and we'll see you in the next Best Practice video.